Greetings, folks. How's everyone doing? Uh, real quick video here for y'all. My 10 favorite finishing moves of all time. I'm just going to jump right into things if i got time at the end talk about a couple other things, but if not, oh well. Here we go. 10 favorite finishing moves ever. No certain order on this, really. Just 10 of them. And here we go. Start off with the mother effing bomb used by John Zandig. Essentially a military press into a Michinoku driver or sit out scoop slam driver or sit out side slam. I've seen hit variations of all. And it's just a really, really cool move. It's very impactful. And it, I've seen him hit it on two people in two of the craziest spots I've ever seen in professional wrestling. Obviously the one with him and Nick Mondo off the building at TOD2. But the other one, the one he hit on Lobo at their Cage of Death match. See how bloody and beaten they both were and then he finally hits it off the top of the cage. and The crowd's reaction, I just mark out every time I see it. Just an awesome move. Really, 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 really. Then we have Cardito's by Cardito's Way by the Messiah. I don't mind the music. I'm listening to some odd Charles Manson. Uh, Carlito's Way is a uh, uh, military press dropped into a cutter or a stunt. Yeah, but dropped into a cutter. Yeah, I'm thinking of another one. Uh, or a flapjack as a uh, counter to Irish Web dropped into a cutter. Either way, insane looking move when he hits it. Just a crazy thud of the person hitting the map when he hits it. That's so like When he hits it really good, it looks like he's going to snap the person's neck in half. It really does. Oh, I'm starting to lose my damn voice. Then we have the Thunderfire Powerbomb, innovated by Atsushi Onida. Um, used also by Onida the Great Sasuke. Lufisto, um, Mr. Pogo, Mr. Ganasuke, Bad Boy Hito, um, uh, Ryuji Hito, um, just all different wrestlers I've seen use this move. And basically it's a one-shoulder power bomb. Plain and simple, but very effective. Let's leave it at that. Then we come to the Assault Driver, or the Joker Driver, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's the same goddamn move with only a slight variation. Uh, basically a electric chair driver, uh, innovated I think by Nick Mondo, also used by Joker as the Joker driver years later. Just a crazy looking move and again, used in two of the more infamous spots I've seen in wrestling. Uh, the probably more well known would be Joker hitting the Joker driver on Chris Cash at Cage of Death, I believe 6, I could be wrong on that. Uh, but him hitting it on Chris Cash off of ladder through tables. And it, it's just crazy how the crowd erupted, and it really looked like a very impactful spot. And my personal favorite, though, Nick Mono hitting it on Homeless Jimmy at, K at a TOD1, I believe it was. Off of a goddamn rider truck, through a table, through light tubes and panes of glass, getting the win. And it, that was just an awesome spot. One of my personal favorites. Then we have the Ganso Bomb or Kawada Driver. I've heard it called both things. I've seen it. Same damn move with both names from various sources, so call it whatever the hell you want. You know what it is, basically. If, for those of you that don't know what it is, Ganso Bomb basically it means the originator bomb in English, loosely, or the original power bomb. And basically, you grab the person in a power bomb, lift them up until they're vertical with you, and then you basically just kneel and drive them neck first and shoulders first into the mat. Just a simple move. Looks like a botched power bomb the first time it was used, but very, very cool move. Very effective move. I'm, it's just one of the cooler moves I've seen in uh, all of pro wrestling. And it's one of the most dangerous in wrestling, so that counts in my book. Then we come to the Phoenix Splash. He's by Hayabusa, innovated by Hayabusa. It's a corkscrew 450 splash. Uh, people probably know it now more so from uh, Tyler Black using it in Ring of Honor. I know there's a few others that use it, but I can't think off the top of my head. I want to say uh, Teddy Hart does it. I think Jack Evans does it. I'm not 100% on that. I think uh, Evan Bourne has used it in the Indies. But again, I'm not sure on that, so just go with Tyler Black and Hayabusa. 
a cool looking high spot and I'm a mark for cool looking high spots so yeah then we have the Pepsi Plunge by CM Punk I really wish he would have kept this move when it came to WWE there's several theories and th several versions of the stories of why he doesn't use it I personally think it's Triple H didn't want the Pepsi Plunge upstaging his little pedigree so the Pepsi Plunge those of you that don't know look it up it's a top rope pedigree. To me, it's a thousand times cooler and more impactful than Triple H's pedigree. Oh, it's Punk says he doesn't use it because it hurt his knees, which is a shame, but I would have let him hit it just once. Just once in WWE, that'd be really cool, but it's one of my favorite moves I've ever seen anyone use. Then we come to Brace to Face by Thumbtack Jack. Thumbtack Jack, if you don't know, he wrestles mainly for Westside Extreme Wrestling based in Oberhausen, Germany, I believe it is. Uh, but anyways, the brace to face. It's basically a brain buster dropped on dropped face first onto his knee. And basically it looks like you take the person for like a brain buster or vertical suplex face buster clutch, drop them down face first, basically dropping them on their jaw. Or on their face onto his knee. And it's just a crazy move, very impactful. They could easily knock the person unconscious or snap their neck if they hit it wrong. Very cool looking move, and TJ is one of my favorite wrestlers of the last decade, easy. Then we come to 630 Corkscrew Centon by my man Jack Evans. Now, Jack Evans very well known for his high spots and just being a little spot monkey and the 630 corkscrew senton that he does oh, it's my favorite of all his all of his moves it to me it's just incredible that a human being can pull that off and two just incredible to see him do it each and every time I mark out each time I see him hit this move it, it's just incredible and finally, we come to the Kudo Valentine, the Kudo Driver, the Cop Killer, uh, the Gringo Killer, the Vertebreaker, the Drake's Landing, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's originated as the Kudo Valentine, innovated by Megumi Kudo. Back to back, double underhook pile driver. Just an awesome move, innovated by one of my favorite female wrestlers of all time, Megumi Kudo. Used by one of my favorite current wrestlers, Homicide, used by Drake Younger. Used by Shane Helms and WCW, I believe. Just a freaking awesome move. That you, aside from the knees, you're never gonna see this in wrestling. You don't see it in mainstream. Well, I take it, but you see Homicide do it every now and then. But it's just a really, really cool looking move. It was innovated by an awesome female wrestler, so that gives it huge points in my in my book. And it's just a fucking cool move, man. That, that to me that counts. Like I said, no particular order on these, so there you have it, my 10 favorite finishing moves. All of them in a nice, tidy little list in the description box, wherever the fuck YouTube put it this week. Uh, let's see, what what's my time on my video right now? Let me check. Um, okay, I got enough time for this. Uh, and just a quick update to all my subscribers. Um, why I haven't been doing videos in the last month or so, and why this is my first one in a while? Uh, basically because... I just don't have the energy to do videos as much and I didn't really feel like doing a video in the last month. Or when I did, I would sit down and after take after take of being just frustrated, like stumbling on my words. Or something, I would just say fuck it and not do the video. Or if I did record it, by the time I got done with everything, there'd be like 30 different videos I would see from various more well-known people here that basically said the same thing I had to say. So I didn't bother with finishing with editing and just deleted the damn thing. So I didn't want to waste my time and yours with videos that basically reiterate and agree with statements made by tons of other people, just worded slightly differently. So yeah, and as far as a uh, future schedule, I'm going to attempt to do a schedule of one a week or one every two weeks or so, but no promises, just stay tuned and look for more videos in the future. Uh, check out my wrestling blog, jumpkerosene.blogspot.com. I look for updates coming to it in the very near future. And anyone coming across for the first time, if you've stayed till this point, I thank you very much. Please rate this video, comment, subscribe. That would really, really help me out if you subscribe. I could use the extra subscriptions. 
And yeah, just tell me what you think. List your ten favorite. If you don't have ten, list your five favorite. Most are your two favorite or your favorite of all time. Just give me your feedback on this. I'd really appreciate it. I thank you for your time, and I'm out. Take care.